Hey guys, welcome back to the This Is Soul Skate Shop YouTube channel. I'm Ivo and today we're gonna discuss the final part in the series about flex. We did a five part series where in the first edition I discussed everything there is to know about flex, like how it's measured, how it goes. I'll tell you a little bit in this episode as well about that. In the, the next episode, the second episode, we did the things how you can maximize the flex in the skate. The third episode was how to reduce flex in the skate. The fourth episode we did last week and was about sideways flex. That's a slightly different topic than forward flex. And today is the fifth episode and we're gonna discuss forward flex again. And this is kind of like the, the summarization of all the, the different episodes. And in this episode, I tried all the skates that you see here behind you that were in my size at least. And I compared them all for you. And I made these charts Look at this, I have all this data now here. Put them all in Excel and we're gonna discuss all this. Things that I wrote down are, of course, the name of the models, what the flex rating is, so that's how much forward flex there is, if it's, if it's a stiff skate or a flex skate. What the range is, so if it just moves a little bit or if it moves a lot. And then if it's linear flex or a progressive flex. A linear flex just has the same amount of resistance from start to finish. And a progressive flex keeps getting more the more you push forward. Some other things that I wrote down are the, the type of mount that a skate has and what the price is uh, and what type of skate it is. Because I thought it would be interesting to filter the information on those type of topics so that we can maybe see some patterns. And there's loads of patterns to be discovered. I now know them all and I'm gonna tell you in this video. I learned a lot in these last couple of weeks doing all this research. Uh, I now also have a really clear preference in what type of flex I want, which I didn't realize that I had this preference. So I learned a lot. I'll tell you what I like at the end of the video. Now I'm just gonna tell you what stands out. So the first topic we're gonna discuss regarding the, all the skates that I tried are the rating, the flex rating. And of course I already explained this in the first video. There is not really a flex rating in this industry. So I had to kind of like come up with my own flex rating. And I could have picked like a rating from one to five or from one to 10, but I went with the standard that's used within skiing because I thought that would make the most sense to do something that a very similar industry is already doing. And within skiing, it's the norm to have a hundred as the norm. So if a, ska if a skate, has a flex rating of 100, it means that it's an average flexible skate in the forward flex at least. We're always talking about forward flex in this video. If a skate would have 120 or 130, it would be a really stiff skate. And if a skate would have 70 or 80, it would be a really flexible skate. And if you sort all the information that we gathered in this table in uh, how much flex it is, um, then you can see some patterns. It was kind of hard to determine what a medium skate would be or a normal skate. Uh, and I thought about this a little bit. So I picked the Roaches M12 in the end because I, I feel that the Roaches M12 is kind of where it all started for our sport. So in a way it should be the norm because it has been the norm for so long. I also think that a lot of the things that the Roaches M12 does to, um, to create the resistance internally to create the, the stiffness is really smart. It's a good skate to set the tone. It turns out though, if you sort all their skates that we have and you put the M12 as a hundred, that most of the skates that we have are actually a lot stiffer by now than the old school M12 is. And that's an interesting thing to think about. How can that be? And I think in general, skates have gotten better and better. So it's just a matter of, of a time progression that skates have gotten a little bit stiffer because stiffer skates are better than skates that are a lot flexier. Then there's another bias that we only sell good skates here at This Is Soul. So if you ever want to get a good pair of skates, come to Amsterdam, try them all out for yourself, see which one you like best, see which one fits your foot best and what kind of flex you like, what colors you like, of course, everything there is. You can see it here in Amsterdam or of course on our web shop, thisisol.com. Another pattern you see is that the skates that have the most flex are the cheap soft boots. Here for example is the uh, Fila Crossfire, but the same goes for the, the Rollerblade Macroblades. All K2 skates are all the same. 
and then you have the Power Slide Fusion. Uh, basically, any cheap skate below 100 euros will have uh, similar uh, aspects, or even probably any of the soft boots below 200 euros will have the same as well. There's basically, to get a soft boot function properly, it needs to be a carbon skate. To, if you want to have a skate without a removable liner, it's always a carbon skate if it's any good. So all these skates where you have no removable liner that are really cheap, they all have a lot of force flex. You can do all the way like this. So that means the range is really long. And it just, this takes me no effort at all to push forward. See how easy it goes? So this one has a flex rating of only 60. This was the most flexy skate that I tried. And the most stiff skate that I tried was this one. It's the trigger skate. It's called the rainbow model. Has a good sole plate, really nice frame. A weird thing about this boot is that you can see the angle of the heel or the, the back of the skate is really straight compared to, let's say, like one other skate that I have here is a little bit steeper of an angle. I would say that this is a lot more natural. And uh, that's fine if it has a straight angle, but then at least you wanna move it forward a lot, right? But guess again, there's no movement in this cuff at all. So it's like, I can't even put my fingers behind it. Or if I grab it here in the front, there's just, it's not even a tenth of a millimeter. I can, I can push this down. It's so different than the, than the, the soft boot skate that you saw before. Uh, so this would be the stiffest skates on the, skate on the market, but also the range, which we're gonna talk about later. The range is so short that it's basically, there's no range, it's, the range is zero. <laughs> then if you look at the chart, you can see that basically all the hard boots in it are just a, a normal medium flex. So if you wanna get any skate, of course, what I'm telling you now is a lot of information and it's probably way too much. So if you wanna be safe, just get a solid hard boot. Probably it will have a four times 80 frame, but you can always upgrade the frame later. So make sure you have a nice solid hard boot and then you're, you're, you're done, all right? That's, that's the easy answer in, into all this madness. Within the category hard boot, you can see that they're all kind of like the same regarding flex, except for the power slide next. And one of the reasons why is because the angle of the cuff bolt, if I would have put in the torques in it, the direction of the torques is really perpendicular to where it's on the other side. So the cuff bolts sit right behind each other. And for example, for a Seba CJ, the cuff bolts are way more in an angle like this. So if the cuff bolts are perpendicular to each other, straight, then there's a lot less resistance. One other reason why the power side next has so much forward flex is because there's a big gap here behind the heel. So you can put the Allen key here all the way in between. Something's, something that's just not possible at all with any other skate that we have here. Like with this one, you can put nothing behind it. Um, and if you have a lot of room behind the cuff, then of course you also have a lot of movement. Then there's two other exceptions and that's the Micro MT Plus. This one has a lot of flex. And another skate from Trigger is the Trigger Cloud Skate. It's just a normal solid hard boot. Uh, it's the same shell as the, the Roach's Ego, so the flex would also be the same for the Roach's Ego. Don't really know why these two stand out. For the parts that next I have a real explanation. For these two, it's my guess why they're so flexible. But all the, all the hard boots are at least the same. So next topic is the linear versus progressive flex. I already explained it a little bit. And that's basically if you press the skate forward like this, in the beginning it might be easy, but later it might be a little bit harder, and then even later it will be even harder. That's an exponential scale, that's how that's called. For this skate, for example, this is very linear, so it takes me the same amount of pressure to push it, push it here, than to push it here, there's no difference. So this is a linear flex. A good skate has a progressive flex. That means that at the end, you can always push it a little bit more down, maybe like a few millimeters, if you like push twice as hard, and then if you push twice as hard again, you can also push it a little, a, a little bit, maybe a few millimeters further. That's kind of like what you want. That's how a flex should be. A well-designed skate is like that. So we can sort the same table of information based on if it's very linear or very progressive. One thing that definitely stands out in the information is that you see a relation. If a skate is linear in flex, it's also very flexible. And if a skate is progressive, 
it's also very stiff. So that's something to think about. It's a funny observation. The exception is again the power side next, which is uh, linear, uh, but it has a flex rating of 110. So that's not really um, uh, flexible, just like uh, an Aeon or uh, some other really flexible skates. The reason for that is, I think, because to get a progressive flex, you need to have these things in the shell underneath the cuff to hold the cuff back. And because of this distance that we talked about before, the next doesn't have that. There's one other exception and that's the Faction Skate. It's a new brand from America. We're the only one in Europe selling it. Um, it sells pretty good. It's very comfortable skate. And if you take this cuff off, and you take the liner off, there's something interesting about it. And the reason why it's a linear skate is what you see now. If you take the liner out, then there's no internal structure left. If you do the same with the CJ skate, which has a very progressive flex, then you can tell that there's this whole structure still. Even the CJ Prime with a removable liner still has this internal shell underneath the cuff to give resistance in the forward flex. You can imagine these are two flat booted carbon skates. Well, this is the plastic version, but it's the same, same structure a little bit. They have the same toe box a little bit. They really look a little bit the same. But the flex is so much different between these two skates. And the reason for that is what you see now. Next topic is the mount of the frame. And this was just something I thought of and I wanted to see if I sorted all the information by mount, what would show, I thought maybe aggressive skates have more flex or they are more linear and or the other is more progressive. Or, but there were hardly any patterns at all. The only pattern that you could maybe see was if I would include the sideways flex in this chart. And I do think that UFS skates, they are made for aggressive skating, they tend to have more sideways flex than 165 millimeter mounts. But the forward flex, there was no relation in. That's also something that's nice to know, now we know. The next topic is the range that a skate has. Um, the way to measure this is if you have a wall or a box and you press your knee as far as you can against that box. And every time you can do it, you can put your foot a little bit more to the back. So let's see how far back you can do it when still pressing the wall. And for me, it's crazy. This is more than 20 centimeters between my toe and the, and the wall. So I have like hyper turbo mega forward flex. And that also means something for my skating. A, a normal person has about 10 centimeters here and 15 is already really a lot, a lot, a lot. So for me to have 20, that means that in my skates, I would need to think about range for sure. Um, and then on the other hand, there's also people that have uh, maybe even zero forward flex and they would also need to have a skate that can compensate for this lack of forward motion. Again, one skate that's super short in the forward flex is the trigger skate. So I don't know if there's any function for it because also I think that you should never stand on your heel that much. You should always lean more on your toes if you can. If you have a really short range of motion or dorsal flexi, is the technical term for it, then you would at least need a skate that has like a, a normal short range. And skates like that are usually the, the carbon skates. If you, if you sort this information, which you can see here, based on uh, the range, you can see that this, the, the skates that have the shortest range are all carbon boots. Then for me, I'm a, a special guy with my uh, extreme turbo mega dorsal flexi. Uh, if I have a skate that has a very long range, um, it kind of like hurts my, my ankle in, in a way. And I also broke my ankle a long time ago, so I'm a, I'm a special snowflake regarding this topic. So that's why I can only skate skates that have a mid-range myself. Um, knowing all this, I would definitely sort out my skates now based on the range that the flex has, or if it doesn't offer the right amount of flex, I would adjust it. We made two videos on how to adjust flex. You can either decrease the amount of flex, but you can also decrease the range, and you can increase the range and increase the flex with that as well. 
check out those videos. Then the next topic is the price. And so we can sort all this information again, but then based on the price. And if we do this, then we see a perfect relation in that the most expensive skates are really stiff and the most cheap skates are really flexy. So this should also tell you something. It's not true that beginners don't need support. You can even make an argument that if you're a beginner, you, can, you need all the support in the world because you're, you need more control because you don't have control yourself. So you need the skate to have a lot of control. So I would not advise any beginner to get uh, a, a cheap skate with anything below like an 80 rating of flex. Usually all those cheap soft boots, they are all way too flexy. Don't get that. That's the, one of the biggest beginner's mistakes that there is. Um, so yeah, it's a nice, um, nice reminder in that uh, stiffness comes a good price. Then trying on all these skates really made me realize something. I never did this. I, n I never did all these skates on my foot. I never put them all on my foot and focused solely on the flex. And I learned for myself that I really want to have a skate that is about 120 in the flex. And I want to have a range that is about mid. And I didn't know that about myself. I definitely want to have a progressive flex as well. So this whole research thing was really helpful for me. Uh, I would advise you to either look at the data really well and think of what you want uh, or come by our store, of course, and take the liberty to try all these skates on yourself and see what flex is, is best for you. All this information that we have here is all in Excel. And we have a link to the Dropbox uh, with the Excel sheet in the description. So you can play with that. You can sort it by your own uh, will and your own metrics and investigate it a little bit yourself. Um, I also made notes on if a skate is wide, narrow, tall, or low on the foot. And we'll include that information on our website as well. So you can filter on thisisold.com based on your own foot shape as well now. We will roll out this new feature probably in the next couple of weeks. So I'm really excited about that. Another thing we're doing on our YouTube is making reviews. We made reviews of a lot of the skates already, but we'll do way more in the future. And in those reviews, we go through the fit of the skate, of course, and everything that sets that skate apart from other skate. And we'll tell you everything there is to know about each and all these models. But if we do reviews in the future, we'll also include the flex because before, we just never really thought about flex that much. And I hope we're going into a future now where we'll change that. That means that also on our website, we will now offer, and this will also be rolled out in a couple of weeks, the option to filter on flex as well. So you can sort your skates based on the amount of flex that it has. And it will also be included in the um, extra information on the product page so that you can see it for each and every skate on our website as well. So I hope all that information will help you pick a skate out if you buy it online. And again, of course, the best thing to do is to fly over to Amsterdam, make a fun weekend trip, give us loads of high fives here, and try out all these skates yourself. Be sure to watch out for our next video on our YouTube. We make a new video every week. So if you like the channel, consider subscribing, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.